I know it's September when I'm shooting this, so it'll be out sometime in September. Some parts of the country are still hot. Of course, the desert southwest, uh, a lot of the west coast is still hot. Uh, but we're going to finish up with talking about beating the heat. And what we're going to talk about today is the issue of beating the heat in the city. You know, it's one thing to beat the heat out here where I'm at right now. You know, you can see I'm in the woods. But if you're in the city, it's a completely different situation. Uh, we've talked about a lot of methods in this series about how you can beat the heat out in, in the uh, woods. And I've got my van set up. It's a fairly hot day today. So I've got my van set up to beat the heat. And when in the woods, you can do this just fine. So I understand being confined to living in a city. Some, and many of you are. You're going to be living in the city and talking about woods doesn't help you in the least little bit. So that's today. We're going to talk about how to beat the heat in the city. So first we're going to talk about steps you can take, which are pretty limited. I mean, you can't do any of this stuff. You just can't be, because of stealth, you just can't make, be, draw this attention to yourself. You can't possibly put out a luminette. You can't put out a cover. You can't put up uh, mosquito netting. That just screams, someone lives in this van. And that's the last thing you want to do is scream, someone lives in this van. So you just can't do any of these things. So here are things you can do while living in the city. And there aren't many, and they aren't very effective, but there are some. Uh, first is to block the windows. Uh, you can just tint them. I've tinted, the first thing I did with this van was tint the windows really dark and uh, with a tint that blocked heat. So that's the first thing. Tint your windows and use a heat blocking tint. Uh, that'll really help a lot, but it's still, you know, that's just the first step. It's one of many. Uh, you can also put up Reflectix, which is far better. Uh, Reflectix on the inside, we have a video on making and putting up Reflectix. So you can go and watch that. That's the same. Sunshade, now that's the most likely. Up in the windshield, this is going to draw attention. Even Reflectix on the inside will probably draw attention. But most people in your town put up uh, sunshades across their windshield. That's normal, routine, and no one will notice. So go to Walmart, go to uh, the dollar stores, they're everywhere, and buy sun, uh, the sunshade, the blocks that you, you know, the pop out, you kind of, they pop out and there you've got them. So then you put those across the, the uh, front windows and that's going to help a lot. The back window, you can do Reflectix. Uh, you can even paint the windows. Uh, some people will even, uh, take black spray paint and spray paint their windows, or they will take uh, black cardboard, cardboard paint it black, push that in. It's so dark that she gives you privacy and blocks uh, the, the light from coming in. So those are options. The first thing though is to block your windows. That's the most important thing. Uh, next is water. I mean, the, 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 the first thing you got to do when it's really hot and if your van's really hot and in the city, your van's just going to be hot. There's, I wish I could tell you, you can make it nice and cozy and comfortable in there. You can't, it's just going to be hot. That's all there is to it. If it's 95 outside, the best you can hope for is to keep it 95 inside. And you probably can't even do that. It might be 110 if it's 95 outside. If it's 110 outside, it could be 140 inside. It's just going to be hot. So there's nothing, the best you can hope for is to keep, unless you have air conditioning, uh, is it will be outside temperature inside. And it can be really hot. Okay, uh, so drink water, drink a lot of water. Well, you've all heard that when it's, when it's, uh, when it's really hot and you're perspiring, uh, drink a lot of water. Now, a lot of one of the things I'm gonna tell you depend on uh, the location. You know, and it, if it's a really humid area, which a lot of you are in, back east, they're all humid areas, you're going to do things a little differently than we will out here in the west, where it's usually pretty dry. Out, out west, a lot of things, one of the things you can do is take water, spray yourself in the face with a light mist, turn a fan on close, and that really cools you off. Say uh, you're in the van alone and you can get in, a, a girl can get in a, like a halter top or a bikini top. The guy can take his shirt off or, you know, you can just, girls, you can take your top off too. You're big girls now, as long as no one's staring inside or you don't mind or you don't want to get arrested. Uh, but spraying yourself and keeping your upper body or uh, damp and having a fan nearby is amazing how that will cool you right down. Another thing you can do is take a towel. Just get a towel good and wet. 
uh, not sopping, you don't want to drip all over your van, but uh, just drape it around your neck, have it hanging, hang, hanging around you. Oh, that'll really cool you off with a fan, that movement, that evaporative cooling effect, tremendous. So always keep that in mind. There are special cloths you can make, special towels, uh, headbands. Sometimes they have a gel that absorbs moisture and then uh, releases it, and that'll make you cooler. And uh, Frog Togs makes a good one, a cooling towel, a chilly towel, I think they call it. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, 10 bucks. But it might be a worth it because you don't have that water dripping off you and it doesn't have that damp feel, but it gives you the same cooling effect. So that's something to look into. Walmart will have a cheap brand and usually they're just as good. Uh, those are all things to consider. So just water and moving air, which brings us to fans. Uh, fans are, tr are just an absolute requirement. If you're living in the van and it's hot, you need to have cooling air moving by a fan. So uh, the, one of the problems with a fan in a van in the city is the noise. You cannot have a noisy one. I mean, if somebody walks, you're parked in the city street or in a residential area and they walk by and there's this hum, hum going on all the time, or if you have a uh, fantastic vent, fantastic fan vent, and you can hear it and uh, that draws attention. And that's the opposite of stealth. Stealth is not drawing attention. So you don't want to draw attention and fans create that problem. Uh, you could run an AC, but boy, it's even worse because no, you're, no one's walking by, even if you have enough solar to run AC, and you probably don't, uh, no one's walking by in the city and not being aware you're running an air conditioner. You're going to hear it. They're going to be aware of it. I think uh, you're, just, you're just not going to do that. So those things are kind of problems. So you need a really quiet fan, and I actually have the one I recommend. We did a fan video, so watch the fan video. We talk about all of them. This is an O-Polar. I'm going to walk in here a little bit, uh, and so maybe you can zoom in on that. I love this fan. It turns out that uh, my assistant, KC, has this exact same fan. It's USB, and it's super quiet, just super, super quiet. Uh, and an easy way to, ch because it's USB, you can see this is a US, just a standard USB plug. This is a standard USB battery bank. Uh, I'll put it in here, and I have a wireless mic on, and I'm going to turn this on. This thing will run forever, and you can take, you can charge this battery bank while you're driving. You can take it to work with you. You can take it to a library with you. I'll turn this on low, and and the mic is here. I mean, it is six inches from the mic. How does that sound? Can you hear that hardly at all? No, I can't hear it. Yeah, it's so low. Uh, you're hearing me, I'm sure, hopefully loud and clear. But you can't even hear this thing. And yet, you know, you can put it this close and it does a great job. If I'm spraying myself with a mist, if I have a towel on, I'm cool. I'm cool right now. Uh, the sun is fairly hot today and I'm cool right now. And it's on low and now it's on high. Now, can you hear that? No. So it's really quiet. I mean, even, uh, even right here, and this is a lot of air, I think you can zoom in pretty close on my face, you could probably see my hair blowing around uh, even out here. Can you hear it just a little bit now? Just a little bit now. Uh, and it's just running off a battery bank, which you can take with you and charge anywhere. I really love these little, little fans. Uh, I just think they're the best of all. So that's something, uh, and we're gonna, we got a fan video, and so we talk about all this. So one of the things you should always be doing is as a stealth uh, someone who lives stealth in a city, is you need to be tune your mind into, as you drive around, look for shade spots, look for shade trees. I mean, surprising amount of num cities will have big trees growing in a Walmart parking lot or uh, a Target parking lot or somewhere, everywhere, just everywhere you go, identify trees and then know, and then think about the arc of the sun. Uh, in the morning, these places have shade I can go to, and in the evening, these places have shade I can go to and be shaded because they're going to be different as the sun arcs across the sky. So know your town and also uh, be always be on the lookout for places you can dump your trash, places you can get water, uh, places you can, you can park and not be annoyed or be annoying. Uh, so you just have to learn your city. That's one of the most important elements of being stealth parking in the city. And part of it is learning shade. Uh, Always be looking for shade. Every time you pull into a parking lot, anywhere in your town, 
look around and find shade, make note of it, write it down. And this is shade, morning shade, afternoon shade, evening shade. Move around so that you don't draw attention. Uh, now, so I think that pretty well covers it. Here is really the most important thing to understand about living in a city, about living in a van, and that is to do siestas. Plan your day around the heat of the day and get out of the van. <laughs> I mean, that's just the bottom line. You're not going to keep the van really comfortable, even with the fans and all, and taking your clothes off, putting your hair in a ponytail. So, uh, but get out of the van. Now, there are a bunch of places. Uh, one of my, the ideas I like about stealth camping the most is the idea of a day camp. So during the day, this is where you go. And, and then uh, like a first half of the day camp, a last half of the day camp, a night camp. Night camp is for sleeping and nothing else. Really, really important. If you're going to have success living stealthing in the city, that's the main thing. Night camp where you do nothing but sleep. You sleep at night. You get there. Uh, you go to bed, you wake up, you drive away. You're there eight or eight hours or however long you're asleep. That's how long you're there. You strip down, you jump in bed, you, uh, uh, you jump up, put your clothes on, drive away. So during the day, you need to find other places. Well, you're, probably most of you are going to be working or you're going to be taking care of a family or something. So you'll be there during the day. But what about the heat of the day when you're not there? Well, um, so next we're going to actually, I went around town with my camera and I took uh, videos. So I went to the library and took a video of the library. I went to a park, a really nice park in Medford where there's actually uh, kind of fountains and you can go over run in the fountains and then go over and sit in the shade. Really cool park. So that's nearly ideal. Pools, a lot of towns have pools. If you're anywhere near the coast which or a, or a lake, you can go to the beach. Uh, and that's a great place because you can just jump in the lake and come out, pools. So I have a long list, and so we're just going to put those clips up, and let's go do that now, and then we'll come back at the end, and I'll have a final word. So let's start looking at those places now. So you can see this is the library, and this is a great place to go to get out of the heat. Uh, you can get inside, you can read, you can uh, plug in all your devices, you can almost always get online and look around. Uh, it's just a really handy, handy place. Uh, wherever you go, you should find the local library. This one's a really large one, but uh, still, you should find the local library and become real good friends with it. Here's another guy, uh, also parked under shade. It's The sun's come around, and now he's getting some sun on the side. But I see guys in here all the time because of these huge trees. They can get in here and be be real good obviously this guy's living here his bikes out I mean, he's obviously living in his van so but the point being when you live in the city you you train your eye to look for trees for shade everywhere you go you make a middle note there's shade at this time of the day and it's going to change all day as the sun arcs across the sky so you just learn go here then go here then go there and rarely can you be in one spot where you can be here all the day okay so let's move on and take a look at some other spots. So if you're in the city and you need to beat the heat, one of the very, very best places you can go is a park. I happen to be at a park here in Medford, and uh, man, it's almost ideal for a van dweller. You can see a lot of trees, a lot of big, huge trees with shade. As the sun arcs across the sky, you can move with it and be in shade all day, easily. Just have to move every so often. Uh, there are picnic tables under the shade. You can see this one is, you can see a water feature over there. Now if it's a hot day and you can get over there in uh, swim trunks and uh, t-shirt and w wander around in that water, you can see the kids playing in the water a little bit I guess, um, then yeah that you're going to be cool and then you come back over and set the shade. Almost any temperature you're going to be okay. Uh, you're just, it's going to be okay. So this one's got a dog run. So if you have a dog, your dog can be out in the shade, off leash, running around. That's a really good thing too. Okay, on to the next place. So here's another place you may not have thought of. Uh, a, a big grocery store. The larger the better. This is Fred Meyers. It's a large, large chain in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I love Fred Meyers, but everywhere you go across the country, 
there are grocery stores, larger grocery stores, that have delis. And the delis usually have um, eating areas. That's becoming more and more common. The more longer you keep a person in the grocery store, the more likely they are to buy. They usually have free Wi-Fi. Mostly they'll have a Starbucks or some kind of a coffee or deli place. So I think you should really consider this. Uh, you know, I'm giving you a lot of places and you can just rotate. You stay too long at any one place, you'll get in trouble. But uh, actually, you know, a grocery store is one of the few that you probably won't get in trouble. Free internet, uh, good price stuff all around you. I really recommend grocery stores as a really good option. Okay, let's move on. So here's another example of some guys who have found uh, shade for their vans. Yeah, this, it's about noon, the sun has come around and it's just about done. They're about done being in the shade. What's kind of unique about this spot is it's a Walmart. And I'll swing around here and uh, so try and do it slowly so I don't give you a whiplash. And by swinging around here, here's the Walmart, which is really unusual to find a Walmart with some good shade. And that's, of course, the holy grail, isn't it? find Walmart with good shade. So you can overnight there and then go in. There's a subway I see. You could probably be in there a lot. You can wander around, find some cool air, and uh, do whatever you normally do at Walmart. So uh, there's another really prime example of finding shade and a day camp to uh, enjoy yourself. Okay, so let's move on. So if you're going to be stealth parking in the city, one of the things you just absolutely have to have is a gym membership. And there are a few better than Planet Fitness uh, because it's nationwide. You can buy a nationwide plan. I won't go into details. They change all the time. So, But all I can tell you is these are everywhere and they are great deals. So get a uh, Planet Fitness or, or there are others. It's not the only world one. Um, I forget the other names. You just do a little research and you can find them. There are a bunch of them that are nationwide, uh, but Planet Fitness is one of the best. And so go in here and stay cool. Uh, go in here to work out a bit, take your shower, have a good time. So, and you can stay cool in there at the same time. So, I really recommend for every stealth camper a Planet Fitness. So here's a McDonald's, and uh, you can go in there, you can get Wi-Fi. It's gonna be nice and cool. Uh, you're out of the heat. <clears throat> With a little luck, you'll find shade nearby. You can park the van in the shade and then go on inside. Be really comfortable. That's with a little luck. But now here, in this particular spot, this isn't terribly unusual. There's also a Burger King. So here's a Burger King, you know, literally a few hundred steps away. So uh, you walk out of the McDonald's, you spend an hour or two in there. You go over to the Burger King, spend an hour or two over there. And on this particular road, I think all the fast foods are up and down, all within walking distance of them. You can spend your whole afternoon going from uh, fast food joint to fast food joint. So that's actually kind of a big plus to my mind. Okay, let's move on to the next place. So, like I've said, one of the places you want to look for are parks. And I happen to be in a little public park. However, there's something about this public park here in Medford that makes it special. And that is this pool. That's pretty sweet. Now, a lot of states and cities and counties have public pools available. Uh, and so that's something you want to be tuned in if you're stealth parking in the city, especially in the summer, in the heat. There may very well be a public pool. There may be quick showers. If nothing else, you can get in the pool and cool off. And there's, see, this one has a kind of a bathhouse here see around my mirror but a public pool is uh, not terribly unusual anymore always be on the lookout for that all right now let's move on so now you have an idea of how to stay cool in the city as best you can when I don't really have any good ideas it's the bottom line is this it's much more of a philosophical idea than anything else and it's that when you live in a van or a car or an RV you live closer to nature. You live cheaper than you ever could in a house. You live with less stuff. 
you live connected to nature. And when you're in nature, connected to nature, you feel nature. You know, our houses are designed for one purpose, that nature is the enemy to be avoided at all costs. We close our houses in, we seal them up tight, we don't want heat, we don't want cold, we don't want to see the sun, we don't want to see the stars, we don't want any kind of a critter to get in, we don't even want moving air to get into our houses, do we? Our houses are a fortress against our enemy in life, nature. Well, you move into a van, that can't be true anymore. Nature has to be your ally and your partner in life. And so you want to make that happen. Uh, and when you, so you accept when it's cold, the cold comes in. When it's hot, the heat comes in. When the wind blows, the van shakes. When the raven lands on your roof and clacks around, you get to listen. <laughs> That's all there is to it. And to my mind, the, the gain is so infinitely greater in mental and emotional health, uh, spiritual health. I think you're so much healthier being connected to nature. Just stop fighting nature. Uh, going out and seeing the stars, seeing the sunset, seeing the sunrise. Being in a van forces you out connecting to nature. And it saves you a ton of money. Why not? You, so you, you save this ton of money, you save that $1,000 a month in rent, and you put it in your pocket every year, every month. I'd rather do that and be a little hot and a little cold and the van shakes. Uh, and chased around town a little bit, and that might happen too. To my mind, it's the best choice you can make. So acceptance of heat and cold, doing your best. I mean, obviously you want to do your best to stay as, as comfortable as you can at all times, and I really recommend that, and I do, uh, and I hope, think you should. But acceptance that this is part of nature, I am part of nature, and it's the normal, natural course of events. I get hot, and I sweat, and I'm uncomfortable, and that's life. Life's a messy thing, and if you're going to live it, it's going to be messy. Sometimes just pouring sweat's part. So I'm going to stop there. I hope you got something out of that. If you did, uh, like us on YouTube, uh, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe please, and uh, tell your friends on your social media about a different way of living and a different way of thinking, and we'll talk to you later.